Food fraud. We're diving into a serious problem that's costing Americans $40 billion a year. Check it out. Of food fraud. The extra virgin olive oils are being switched out with cheap ones and fraudulent to sell something labeled as something else. Why is this fish being mislabeled? Your Parmesan cheese products do not contain any Parmesan cheese. As there was no one brand that stood out as completely safe. Well, so we can't eat anything. I guarantee you any time a product can be passed off as something more expensive, it will be. It's that simple. Counterfeits, dilution, substitution, and mislabeling. Food fraud not only harms consumers' wallets, it puts their health and safety at risk. We might not know the overall impact of food fraud because so much of what fraudsters do is hidden from us and has been for centuries. I remember years ago, I started only buying peanut butter that contained peanuts. Family laughed at me. I didn't think expecting my peanut butter to be made from peanuts was unreasonable. But seriously, guys, the food in our kitchen cabinets may not be what it seems. Fraudsters who want to make a quick buck sneak into the worldwide food market in a lot of different ways, like counterfeits, dilutions, substitutions, and mislabeling. This doesn't just hurt your wallet. It's also making things risky for your health and your safety. Some guesses say this kind of cheating affects at least 1% of all the food in the world, costing about $40 billion every single year. Even the FDA admit that they can't really say how often this trickery happens or how much it hurts the economy. So yeah, guys, just be careful about what you eat, what you put on your body, and what you plug into the wall. Between 2012 and 2021, the most common food frauds involved lying about where an animal came from and mixing or swapping ingredients, both making up about 16% of the times that it happened. For example, mixing could mean adding a cheaper vegetable oil to an expensive olive oil. These fake foods cost real companies a lot of money and it put a lot of people at risk. At the least, you're getting cheated. At the worst, you could be eating something that's harmful to you. Whether it's truffle oil on your fries, vanilla in your ice cream, or wasabi in your sushi, the real ingredients are often too rare or expensive to meet the demand around the world. Here's how criminals and legitimate companies alike make big bucks selling less expensive substitutes. First, truffles. You see truffle oil everywhere, but actual truffles are actually incredibly rare. So what is called truffle oil is entirely made in a laboratory. It has nothing to do with mushrooms. A single wild foraged white truffle weighing 70 to 80 grams can fetch $102, and the fungus is a popular target for counterfeiting. Meanwhile, black truffles, which are capable of being cultivated, still take six years to grow. As for truffle oil, that's typically a mixture of olive oil or sunflower oil flavored with a synthetic compound derived from petroleum called 2,4-dithypentine, the same aromatic aromatic compound as foot odor. Yes, you heard that right guys, foot odor. The only way to be certain that what you're eating is a genuine truffle is to see it shaved in front of you. It should look like a truffle. It should look like a mushroom product. Interestingly enough, I heard a story about a family farm in Croatia that grew truffles, not knowing at first how expensive they were. They were talking about porcinis, which grow there in that region, and they casually mentioned we grow these other mushrooms too. You know, the ones pigs go crazy for. They said that they used to let the pigs dig them up and eat them because nobody in the family liked those black smelly mushrooms. So imagine the look in their faces when they found out what they were and how much they were worth. Priceless. And this is literally just the first on our list of the most faked foods in America. Stay tuned guys for the rest. First, just a really quick thanks for watching and always a big thanks for lighting up the like button. We really appreciate it. Now, if you want more hard hitting videos and documentaries like this one, don't hesitate to hit the subscribe button and turn that notification bell on. Totally free and most importantly, it's totally not fake. Not like the rest of the foods on our list. Now, speaking of, the next one is maple syrup. As much as half of the maple syrup is not real, often sold as table syrup or pancake syrup containing a mixture of corn syrup, caramel coloring, and flavoring. The weirdest thing about this whole fake syrup thing is how they managed to convince all of us that syrup tastes like pure sugar. I had real maple syrup for the first time just a few years ago, and I had no idea it tastes so different. I love that companies can just get away with literal false advertising and illegal practices with zero consequences because of money. Most of the world's genuine supply comes from Canada, which exports about 85% of the total consumed to each year. And making the sweet stuff is not easy. 
It takes 44 gallons of maple sap to produce a single gallon of pure syrup. Spotting the real thing often comes down to color and texture, with pure maple syrup having a thinner consistency and cloudier appearance than artificial blends. Wasabi. Nearly all of the wasabi sold outside of Japan is a preparation of horseradish, sweetener, and cornstarch. The real thing costs roughly 30 times more and is one of the most difficult plants to cultivate commercially. Wasabi is a plant that naturally grows by mountain springs in Japan. It likes mild weather, shade, and the stony soil there. People sell parts of the plant for $319 per kilogram. Just like with truffles, the best way to know that you're getting the true wasabi is to watch it being made in front of you. Usually, they use a special metal tool to turn the plant into a smooth paste. Another hint is the taste. Real wasabi isn't actually as spicy as the fake one made from horseradish, and it has a more gentle, subtle flavor to it. Next, Parmesan cheese. People who love wine know it's only real champagne if it comes from champagne. Same thing, Parmesan cheese is only true Parmesan if it comes from Parma, Italy, specifically the Emilia Romagna region. So this region has special bacteria that make the cheese taste a certain way. There are only 300 dairies in the area allowed to make the real Parmigiano Reggiano, and it has to be aged for at least a year to get its important umami flavor crystals. The real Parmesan wheels are marked with stencils and have DOP stamped on them, which means Denomination di Origine Proteta. This shows that it's from the right place. You can find Italian Parmesan in great grocery stores, but other options might be cheaper for a few reasons. Parmesan made in America only needs to be aged for 10 months, and other graded blends can legally have up to 4% of fillers like rice flour and wood pulp. Number five on our list, vanilla. And interestingly enough, there's truly nothing plain about real vanilla. To get the flavor we like in vanilla, people go through a painstaking process. They use special orchard flowers that they carefully pollinate by hand. After that, they gather seed pods and massage them to get vanillin. These pods are then soaked in water and alcohol to make an extract. Because making real vanilla is so detailed, only about 1% of products with vanilla flavor actually use real vanilla. The vanillin used in labs can come from petroleum and it can be made using clove oil, wood, or bark to create the fake flavor. This is usually harmless, but there was one case in Mexico where a producer sold bottles with extract from a plant called tanka. This plant has a harmful substance called coumarin, which is not allowed in the U.S. and can be dangerous for people on blood thinners. If you compare real vanilla extract with the artificial version, the real one often smells more like alcohol and looks cloudier. Next on our list is caviar. Caviar is made from salted fish eggs or roe and is one of the most expensive substances on the planet. Prices can range from $24,000 per kilogram. So you can imagine how this makes caviar a very popular target for counterfeiters who use roe from lower quality fish, such as lumpfish. Making real beluga sturgeon caviar takes a lot of time. The fish need to grow for 10 years before they can be caught and their eggs be taken. After that, the eggs are carefully pushed through a metal grate and mixed with salt, being careful not to break the thin covering around them. It's not easy to see the difference between the real beluga caviar, which cost $175 per jar, and the fake ones just by looking. But a hint is that the genuine caviar has a uniform shape and glossy shine. You can also test by putting a few eggs in hot water. The real caviar will cook and become hard, while imitation roe will just dissolve. Another one, honey. Honey might surprise you, but it's said that about one third of the honey traded around the world is fake. Why? Well, there's too much demand for honey and bees just can't make enough fast enough. Most of the honey in the world comes from China and that's also where a lot of the fake honey comes from. To make more honey, some producers mix real honey with artificial fillers like corn syrup, glucose, or other kinds of sugars. This processing or any kind of changing the honey, it tends to destroy the best nutritional health qualities of a natural honey, turning it into a much cheaper sugar. To get the best honey, experts suggest avoiding any mixtures and buying raw honey that comes from local sources, preferably from a farmer's market. Number eight, extra virgin olive oil. People have been selling fake extra virgin olive oil since the time of ancient Rome. Back then, these criminals sold lower quality olive oil or mixed it with other oils and named it extra virgin olive oil. Most extra virgin olive oil still comes from Spain, Italy, or Greece. They make it by squeezing ripe olives without using heat or chemicals. They use machines to shake fruit off of trees, then grind it, spin it, and press it. 
A good quality bottle of this oil can cost about $10 for 17 ounces. But what makes it difficult is that fraudsters often set up fake olive oil businesses among real ones, making it very hard to tell the difference without tasting it. Experts say it's safer to choose oils labeled extra virgin and avoid ones labeled blend or light. Also, Check the pressed on date. It should be less than a year old as the fruity, grassy flavor of the EVOO fades after about two years. Next, number nine, Wagyu beef. Wagyu simply means Japanese cattle and it refers to four breeds, Kurog, Akage, Makuku, and Nihon Tankaku. In Japan, there are strict rules about how they raise and process cows to make Wagyu beef. The cows eat a special diet of rice and corn, making the meat really tender and marbled. Sometimes just one pound of Wagyu beef can cost $200 and a whole cow can sell for $30,000. That's 10 times more expensive than American black Angus beef. Japan does not export a lot of Wagyu beef, so what the rest of the world calls Wagyu might not be as good. In the US, ranchers mix Wagyu cows with sturdier ones. According to rules, only one parent needs to be Wagyu, with 93.7% genetic match to sell the meat as Wagyu beef. But this meat would only be 46.9% genetically Wagyu. When Arby sold a Wagyu burger, the patty was only 51% American Wagyu and 49% regular beef. So only about a quarter of the meat was truly Wagyu. And by the way, real Wagyu is too tender to make a good hamburger anyway. Now for the final one on our list of the most fake foods in America, coffee. Coffee is big, big, big business, and historically, it's been cut with anything that's brown. Burnt paper, burnt corn, sawdust. Yeah, I said sawdust. Ground coffee has also been augmented with ground acorns, barley, and wheat. Whole bean coffee usually has fewer fillers added to it, but making a lot of it can be tricky and affect how good it tastes. To make one pound of coffee beans, you need about 1,500 coffee cherries. The best coffee comes from cherries that are picked by hand when they're fully ripe. The skins are taken off and the seeds inside are dried and roasted. When machines do the harvesting, they don't care if the cherries are ripe or not. They collect both kinds and process them together. Plus, it's not easy to know where coffee beans come from because there's so many steps involved in getting them ready. But trustworthy coffee makers and groups like Specialty Coffee Association can help you find good quality coffee. Yep, I know it's a lot to take in. Overall, the Food Fraud Prevention Think Tank suggests five questions a consumer can ask themselves to reduce their vulnerability to product fraud. What type of product is it? Take extra caution with any product that you put in your body, ingest, or plug in the wall. Can you recognize the difference between products? Do you know the retailer or supplier? Do you trust them? Are you shopping online? If so, did you find the online supplier from a reliable source? Complain. Is the supplier legitimate? If so, they will want to know. So what do you guys think? Any fake food to add to our list? Let me know and maybe we can make another video for the next one. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'll see you guys there.